Hello all and uh, welcome to another video. Uh, as you can probably tell from the uh, title and the thumbnail, um, this is my uh, updated uh, alternative manga and Gekiga uh, collection. Um, it might be a bit of a long one, I'm not too sure. Um, but I wanted to re-record this or at least do an update on it as uh, since I did my last one a little bit earlier this year, um, the titles that I own that could be considered alternative or Gekiga um, have, uh, have grown. I think last time I recorded this shelf here where I normally keep all of my uh, Gekiga titles was only about half full and and, and even then there was a couple of titles that I uh, that I forgot to show um, in uh, in that video, uh, namely my um, uh, Majira Taniguchi um, and uh, Shigeru Mizuki works. Um, but I've steadily been collecting more, um, more Gekiga uh, since then, on and off. Um, and I just thought it'd be a good idea to uh, to re-record this, uh, as I, I feel you know the collection is now at such a point where um, you know it's, it's it's worth at least doing an update on it. Um, you know, just so it's not too um, dissimilar from the other one. Uh, anyway, um, not all of these have I read. Um, so I'll just be kind of going through them pretty quickly. Um, obviously I might talk a little bit more about the ones that I have read, um, and ones that I'm excited to read perhaps as well. Um, but for anybody who's unfamiliar, um, with, with the term Gekiga, uh, and if you haven't perhaps watched my, my first video on this, I mean, to be honest, I really probably should do a, a video, um, kind of explaining what it is, you know, from, from myself, a layman's perspective, at least I'm by no means an expert. I just have an interest in reading it. Um, but Gekiga is to manga, I guess what you could call uh, graphic novels to comics. So manga literally translates as uh, whimsical pictures. Uh, Gekiga was a, a term coined by uh, um, an author called Yoshi, Yoshihiro Tatsumi back in, um, back in the 1950s. Um, which literally translates as uh, dramatic pictures. And uh, that was his way um, of trying to depart from the conventional norm of uh, sequential storytelling in Japan at the time, which is mostly just shonen and shoujo uh, series. You know, just comics were very much aimed at children, um, but authors were finding, you know, that those those that formula was too restrictive for the type of stories that they were wanting to tell. Which were much more um, dramatic in nature, dramatic in nature, much more adult oriented. Um, you know, depicting uh, everyday uh, life. Um, you know, the ups and downs of of life. Um, you know, the, the 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 traumatic aspects of life, the mundane aspects of life, which obviously you would never have found uh, in 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 children's comics. You know, shonen and shoujo manga at the time. You know, it was a it was a rejection of of, of that convention. Um, so so you know you, you, there were there was a particular magazine that sprung up um, called Garo, which was uh, artists authors really had um, the freedom to really tell the stories that they wanted to tell. Um, you know a lot of a lot of them from what I've read at least uh, you know straddled the line between um, storytelling and 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 almost conceptual art. Um, it was, you know, it's graphic design. Uh, it was about, you know, pushing the norms of, of, of artistry, you know, physically and, and, and literally, um, literary. Uh, so that's very, very much just a, a, a very brief overview of my layman's <laughs> understanding of, uh, of Gekiga. Uh, most of which I've learned from, from the really helpful essays that are, more often than not included uh, in, in, in the back of some of these books. Um, so by no means am I an expert or am I calling myself an expert? I'm, I'm just a fan. Um, and I, the purpose of this video really is just kind of um, talk about series that I, you know, see no other people really in the community talking about. Um, and if anything here picks your interest, then, you know, I would, um, uh, I, I would encourage you to, 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 to dip your toe in, you know, to, um, to, Gekiga and alternative manga, if if um, if the interest you know 
um, captures you. Anyway, we're going to move from from uh, from left to right. Um, starting off with Cigarette Girl by uh, oh, I think this is I don't know what um, Top Shelf Productions. Um, this is one that I'm yet to read, uh, but the, I mean. You'll find out, obviously, as well, more often than not, that the cover designs for, for Gekiga and alternative manga um, are also really, um, really different as well. Um, but this is something I'm really looking forward to reading. Um, I'll put that down there just because I don't want to squeeze it back in my shelf. Uh, next, oh, by the way, this is by uh, uh, Masahiko Matsumoto, with a forward by Yoshihiro Tatsumi, who, uh, who I just mentioned, as uh, the, who is known as the, the father of uh, Gekiga and alternative comics, and also edited by Sean Michael Wilson, who um, will be a name you'll hear a few times, maybe one once or twice throughout this collection video. Uh, next, we have uh, Fukushima Devilfish by Susumu Katsumata, uh, including uh, critical and biographical essays uh, by, uh, I believe, Ryan Holmberg. Um, again, another name who you will, uh, will you'll, you'll hear quite frequently throughout this this is a really nice release from Breakdown Press. Um, I'll take off the dust jacket so you can kind of get an idea of what the cover's like without it. Um, just a plain cover, but, you know, a nice little um, design. And uh, the artwork inside, it's got this like really nice blue sort of tint to it. Um, gorgeous, gorgeous artwork. And if, uh, if you like anything by Susumu Katsumata, then you'll know he really likes... Uh, Things surrounding uh, like yokai and kappas, in particular the the little forest spirits, uh, the, the little riv river sprite spirit things. Um, anywho, uh, I, I, this is one that I've yet to read as well, but I do believe it's um, to do, or, or perhaps is Susumu Katsumata's um, critique on uh, nuclear power uh, in the wake of the Fukushima um, nuclear power plant disaster in two thousand and eleven. Um, but again, I'm yet to read it, so I've really got much to say on that. Next, uh, something I actually recently read. I'll put that back there, just kind of hold it up. Uh, which is um, The Sky is Blue with a Single Cloud by uh, uh, Kuniko Sarita, which was, this was actually recently, um, uh, I think it was recently nominated for an Ignatz Award um, for, for Best Story Anthology. This is um, uh, one of, this is something I recently talked about in one of my, um, uh, one of my man uh, monthly wrap-up videos as uh, Kuniko Sarita is very unique even within the, the, the sphere of alternative comic making insofar as uh, she was one of the only female contributors to uh, to alternative comics in in, uh, in the late 60s and early 70s and up, uh, up even into the, the early to mid 80s um, before her death. Uh, she died very young, unfortunately, but her contribution can't be understated. Um, no matter how much is uh, underappreciated, um, really far out storytelling, a very nihilistic approach to uh, to to the, the to the themes and you know kind of topics that she likes to discuss uh, in her work. Uh, yeah, let's try and move on a little bit quicker. Uh, next we have uh, "Man Without Talent" by Yoshiharu Suge, um, another pioneer of uh, Gekiga comics. This one, by, this one released by uh, New York Review Comics. It's a beautiful release um, with another essay by Ryan Holmberg uh, about a guy who uh, uh, he's, he's, he's trying to try and different get rich quick schemes, but he's he's just got this um, overwhelming sense of of, uh, of dispassion uh, and just can't really get to motivate himself to do anything really productive, which obviously has a detrimental effect on his. On his family life, uh, as you can see from the cover, he's just incredibly lazy, uh, but really interesting read nonetheless. Uh, next is a series a title from a um, really interesting newer publisher from uh, Glacier Bay Books, uh, Children of Mutown by uh, Masamura Joshichi. Uh, this is actually quite a popular title if, um, if you know, you kind of veer off the beaten track. Um, a couple of people have, have talked talk really highly about this. Um, Uchu Shelf, in particular, did a really glowing review of this, uh, and it was good. I really enjoyed it. Um, probably not as much as he, um, but it was really good nonetheless. Uh, really interesting art style, uh, really interesting character designs, as you can see. Uh, Glacier Bay, um, 
unfortunately if you don't live in the US where uh, where these are primarily based then it's very difficult to get the titles um, particularly in England where I am um, goddamn Brexit uh, okay next uh, we have uh, Garden by Yuichi Yoka Ugh. Garden by Yuichi Yokoyama um, by Picture Box which is uh, unfortunately now defunct um, no longer in business uh, this is another one that, that I recently discussed in one of my uh, mon monthly wrap-up videos and is very much one of the most far-out alternative titles that I've read ever, um, as it very much is just illustration um, and an attempt at uh, mixing conceptual art with sequential storytelling. Um, there really, really isn't any story to it, but it's really, really interesting um, if, if, if you really like kind of picturely sort of um, interesting geometric sort of characters um i liked it uh, next another um title from breakdown press uh, the pits of hell by ebisu yoshikazu yoshikazu uh, this is one that i'm yet to read so i can't really you know talk about the quality of it but i've heard it's really really good um i know that manga kid um really really enjoyed this so uh and his reviews are always pretty solid so again um very interesting art style uh, for what it is very quintessentially Gekiga style uh, with the uh, really far right expressions and kind of angular style. Um, look forward to reading it. Might be pretty interesting. Uh, next is uh, Bloody Stump Samurai by Retrofit uh, or Retrograde Comics. Can't remember what these what they're called again. Um, can't remember the name of this publisher. Retrofit Comics. That's right. Uh, it's a period piece by Hiroshi Hirata, um, all about samurai. Very much in, looks like it's in the same vein as uh, anything by uh, Goseki, Goseki Kojima or uh, uh, Kazuo Kamimura. Kamimura. Um, you know, super violent uh, samurai story. Um, again, really look forward to reading it. <laughs> I don't want to spoil anything for myself. Um, next, another one by Retrofit Comics, uh, The Troublemakers by Bash Baron Yoshimoto. Uh, another one that I'm yet to read. Uh, let's have a look at the artwork. I do believe that there, there are a few colour pages. Really nice. I like it. Quite dense pages, but... Uh, yeah, I really like it, in fact. Yeah, look forward to reading this. Um, there's the back. If you want to pause it and read it. Uh, there you go. <clears throat> Uh, next is uh, Monokura Kinder Book by uh, Kan Takahama. This is a name you will uh, you will see a little bit later on in the video. Um, this is a release from Fanfare Opponent Mon, who uh, do a really good job at publishing a lot of the uh, franco um, uh European style manga. Um, this is very much in the same vein of that, even though Ta Kan Takahama herself is Japanese. Uh, you can say it's got a very European looking style, very digital, almost Photoshop looking style. Um, yeah, really interesting. I don't want to show you anything too, uh, too uh, spoilerish or um, graphic or, or anything like that. And one thing I learned recently, which I was really pleased with, is that this is uh, a signed copy. So, author herself has uh, signed and a little portrait of herself in this um that's her name in japanese there but yeah um i mean i, I never signed this I, I never got her to sign this myself but this was just a used copy um that i got off amazon and it's signed so that's pretty cool i was really happy with that um next Dip disappearance diary by uh hideo azuma which um is again another fanfare opponent on release uh, I believe this is uh, semi autobiographical, so it's a not it's a it's a non fiction work, um, very almost like a peanuts sort of style to the um, to the cartooning in this one. Um, I really really like the whimsical style, despite its serious subject matter, um, which I believe is about um, the main author who uh, decided to go rogue. He just disappeared one day, uh, had enough of his life. Um, I'm wanting to know more. Uh, so yeah, a, a nice kind of juxtaposition between the kind of childish, whimsical style dealing with, um, you know, really adult sort of orientated subject matter. Uh, next, 
double whammy of uh, Heartbroken Angels. I don't necessarily think this is Gekiga or, or alternative manga. It's just one of my older pulp series. Um, for coma sort of comedy strips dealing with really grotesque sort of adult orientated, uh, very sexualized comedy. Um, I won't show you anything inside just for fear of, uh, you know, getting censored on YouTube. But yeah, it was worth picking up. I mean, there's only two volumes ever released in English uh, from what was a total three volume series. So it's unfortunate I won't ever be able to finish that, but it is what it is. Uh, next, we have a uh, town of evening calm country of cherry blossoms by uh, Fumio Kuno or Kono rather. Again, I don't know if this is necessarily Gekiga or alternative manga as the style is very much kind of conventional, um, but it's just such a beautiful story about um, the after effects of, uh, of the Hiroshima and Nagasaki bombings after World War II or at the end of World War II and the physical effect it had on people, you know, think in the vein of, um, you know, Grave of the Fireflies, you know, Barefoot Gen, that sort of storytelling, you know, very emotionally impactful. Um, so, yeah, again, I, I don't know if necessarily Gekiga or alternative, um, alternative manga, but I keep it on the shelf anyway. Uh, the next one, however, very much is um, Gekiga. Uh, Red Coloured Elegy by Seichi Hayashi. Um, probably one of the most infamous Gekiga artists. Uh, he's, he's very much got an avant-garde style, um, very unusual storytelling where you can read a short story of his and not really understand um, what it's about at all. Um, very much uh, themes of, of the death of the author in, in, in so far as you just kind of make up your own mind on what it's about. But I, I, I do believe that this one is actually a um, like a, a, a self-contained story rather than short stories, which is from the, you know, what, what I've read of his before. So uh, this might actually have some sort of semblance of, uh, of coherence to it. Uh, and I'm looking forward to reading it. Um, yeah, uh, you can pause it on the, um, on the back of there if you want to read about it. Um, next is uh, the first, my first foray into alternative comics, and that is Axe Alternative Manga. Um, a really interesting release, again, by Sean Michael Wilson. Um, titled as Volume 1, but unfortunately never got a second volume. Um, it was in the works, from what, I'm, from what I've been told. Um, when I asked, uh, I asked Sean, um, Sean Michael Wilson about it myself, and he said that the, you know they even got so far as as uh, getting you know a draft for the for, for the cover design, and it just never went forward. So you know that's really disappointing. But uh, I guess maybe just not enough people supported this. But Axe is another um, important manga um, in the history of. Uh, sorry, Axe is another important um, magazine in the history of, of Gekiga uh, storytelling. Um, a lot of really popular authors um, who were also publishing in Garo at the time, uh, published in, in Axe as well, which, you know, it was essentially just another alternative manga, Gekiga magazine. Um, and this is essentially just a, a showcase of, you know, some of the artwork, some of the short stories that have been published, um, you know, throughout, throughout the, its time. Um, Really, really interesting sort of story to, uh, short stories. Um, I really, really enjoyed this at the time that I read it. Um, I would highly recommend anybody pick this up and read it if, if you manage to get you, get a hold of a copy. Um, it is amazing. Um, next, uh, the brother brother of Yoshihara Suge, Tadao Suge. This is Slum Wolf um, by New York Review Comics. Uh, I'm yet to read this as well. Um, but I believe, again, this is a, a series of short stories, an anthology series of some of his best works. Um, he's got a very similar style to his brother, um, Yoshiharu. Uh, but yeah, there you go. There's a kind of taste of the artwork. Um, lots of cross-hatching cross and uh, heavy use of, of dark kind of imagery. Yeah. Uh, another one by Tada Suge, Trash Market by this one. This one is actually by John Quarley. Uh, and I, I believe this is also translated by Ryan Holmberg. Probably a couple of these have already been translated by Ryan Holmberg, and I've just failed to mention his name. Uh, again, this is another one that I'm yet to read, but I don't really know much about this one. Um, the uh, the former one, Slum Wolf, I believe. 
in fact, I don't know what the former one's about. Uh, I was looking forward to reading both of them. Um, okay, uh, next one. I think one of the uh, if if you have a big if you're a real collector of manga, then you know you'll definitely have this in your collection. Uh, it's probably not fitting on the screen there. It's a Drifting Life by Yoshiharu Tatsumi. Yoshiharu Tatsumi again, the 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 father of Gekiga manga, and this is his um, uh, his autobiography. His uh, um, autobiography, rather, and not his biography, uh, of, of his life, um, you know, in the industry. I believe also Osama Tezuka makes a cameo in this as well, um, as, you know, they were both contemporaries of each other and were rivals to uh, to a certain degree. Uh, but yeah, uh, this is actually a recent pickup of mine. I managed to get a good deal on, on this copy, so I'm really looking forward to reading this. Uh, next. Okay, so next... I have somewhat of a triptych of uh, Yoshihiro, Yoshihiro Tatsumi manga. These are the library editions of his uh, three-volume series. Um, so first we have The Pushman and other stories. Uh, this is not in great condition. And these are just short stories published between, uh, or just published in 1969. As you can see on the, kind of on the cover there. Um, I really, really enjoyed these. They're, they're, they're very much the kind of things that you should read um, in order. The next one is uh, Abandon the Old in Tokyo. Uh, short stories published between, oh, no, just in 1970. Yeah. And then finally, Goodbye, uh, which is short stories published between 1971 and 1972. Uh, yeah, really, really awesome stories in this. Uh, very much just about, um, you know, what it means to be a working class uh, man, mostly. Um, you know, the kind of horrible situations that working class people find themselves in. Um, you know, it's, it's very much kind of about mundane life, people's vices and, you know, things that are kept, you know, behind closed doors. Um, you know, trying to keep up appearances, you know, things like that. Uh, very much kind of relatable topics, um, you know, sometimes to a certain degree, other times not. Uh, but yeah, I mean, this isn't a review. <laughs> Uh, next, again, another Yoshihiro Tatsumi work, Black Blizzard, which is, uh, apparently he wrote this manga in in a month, or like two or three weeks. Um, really, really good good manga, in fact. It's, short, it's a short read, but definitely worthwhile. It's about two convicts escaping from uh, from prison, and they're both, uh, they're both handcuffed together, uh, and they need to find a way to, to break free. And then, uh, and then they got they get caught in a blizzard, so they're battling against the elements and time as well. Really, really good, good read. Uh, next is another one by Susumu um, Katsumasa. By the way, all of these are published by Drawn and Quarterly as well. Um, so yeah, here we go. Red Snow by Susumu Katsumata, same guy who did um, Fukushima Devilfish. Another one, just just another series of short stories. Uh, I absolutely loved this one. I read it last year. Um, See if I can kind of give you a taste of, of some of the artwork. There's nothing really explicit in this, to be honest. Uh, there you go. Um, yeah, highly recommend this. It's still reasonable, reasonably priced from what I uh, from what I've seen lately. Still come across this for a good deal. Uh, next, we have uh, the Boxman by Imiri Sakabashira. I think this is the only manga of his that we have published in English. Uh, again, by John and Quarterly. Uh, this is very much. Uh, Kind of in the same vein as Seichi Hayashi, this is very much just kind of like a, a fever dream almost. It's it's almost got no dialogue, um, and it's basically this this dude on the cover over here um, driving around um, this really weird, twisted sort of urban metropolis on his moped, um, trying to deliver a package. Um, he is the titular boxman, and it's just very much a showcase of. Um, I mean, he's, there's no story to it at all. As you can see, it's, it's, it's just really, really weird. Um, and it's just basically following this guy on this journey. You don't know where he's going. You don't know what's in his box. Um, you don't know who he is or, or who he's delivering it to or for what purpose. You're just kind of following him and just, you know, enjoying the ride. Like I said, it's very much just like a fever dream. You just, it, it's more of an experience um, than, than uh, something to kind of, you know, um, critique. From a, from a story perspective. Uh, yeah, very interesting. 
Uh, next is uh, a single match by Oji Suzuki. Uh, this one I didn't really like that much, and it's probably because it, again it, it, it was it short stories that um, are so unconventional and and kind of difficult to interpret. But unlike all the other sort of similar sort of gekka that have um, you know the the complementing essays and, and and author notes and translator notes that kind of give you some context as to maybe you know what was in the author's mind or or, or what maybe the author is referring to if there's something kind of more uh, um, you know if it's more kind of like uh, you know catered to to you know the time that it was made or or, or the culture that it, you know he was appealing to there's none there's none in this there's there's no essays or no kind of author commentaries or anything like that that kind of gives you any context as to you know what it might be, might be about so you're just kind of left to kind of really interpret it yourself and i found it, it was quite a, a cumbersome read um you know with that with that in mind so i didn't really enjoy it as much maybe i will on a second read i don't really know um and again this isn't an author i'm familiar with as well so you know when you're not familiar with an author it's difficult to kind of understand you know what their sort of writing style uh, or arti artistic style is like uh anyway uh, another one by Yoshihara Suge uh, another one by Drawn a Quarterly even, this is The Swamp. This is a, a recent pickup of mine, and I believe this is going to be uh, um, a seven, the first of seven volumes um, that are going to be collected in these really nice hardcover bound editions by uh, Drawn a Quarterly, just kind of showcasing you know some of the best uh, short stories from, Yoshi, from Yoshihara Suge's career. Uh, I believe that you know, they, 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 this is literally just a, um, a, a curated collection um, you know, of his stories. So I'm not, you know, this isn't something I've read or anything. Um, and I don't know what kind of time period it spans, but, you know, nevertheless, I'm looking forward to reading it at some point. Uh, get back in there. Next uh, is, um, I think it's a self published one, um, Stonebridge Press, rather. Uh, this is uh, the Mina Mata story, an eco tragedy uh, by Sean Michael Wilson and Akiko. Uh, Shimojima, uh, the same guy who uh, gave us Axe and uh, The Cigarette Girl. Uh, this is another non-fiction uh, manga, apparently about, um, a uh, a, a, well, as it says on the, on the cover, an eco-tragedy, um, a, a, a disaster that happened um, in a lake surrounding, uh, in, in a river surrounding a village, or it might be in a lake, I'm not too sure. I haven't read this yet. But from, from what I understand of the synopsis on the back, it's basically... Um, local villagers who were uh, poisoned um, by contaminated water from from like a local power plant or something, some some kind of industrial plant that contaminated their 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 drinking water supply with mercury, um, and obviously the, the the disastrous effects that that had on on people, you know. Um, as a result, I think uh, you know you can see this person on the cover here is looking, you know, like it is it's affected their body, you know, it's, it's crippled them. Um, so, yeah, it's probably going to be a very sobering read. Uh, get back in there. Okay, the next three titles are, um, are what are called uh, Novel Manga, or Nouveau Manga, I believe, which is French, uh, French authors um, kind of teaming up with uh, um, like Japanese uh, authors or Japanese companies to, to, to produce their own manga. Um, I think the first one, I think this one is actually a Japanese author, Hideo Oda, um, A Patch of Dreams, but in fact, I, I don't think this is a novel manga, I'm not too sure, um, I'm yet to read this one as well, but it just looks so gorgeous, I mean, look at this artwork, very much, it looks kind of similar to Daisuke Igarashi, in fact, a kind of scratchy soft style, um, it just, it's just gorgeous, <laughs> this is very much a... Uh, a buy just for the artwork alone um so i'm very very much looking forward to reading this uh, I don't want, no, I'll put it down there in fact it's actually the next two um these next two volumes are, are uh, franco grecan um nouveau manga uh, the first being yukiko spinach and mariko parade which uh, i believe uh, this is a sequel to this uh, it's by uh, frederick boile um uh, and well, th this one's only by Frederick Frederick Borle, but this is by Frederick Borle and uh, Kan Takahama. Um, I believe she does the artwork for this one. 
but I think it's about uh, Frederick's time living in Japan, uh, falling in love with a, a Japanese woman who uh, seemingly ends up breaking his heart. Um, so probably quite sad. Um, oh yeah, as you can see, the defining work of novel manga, which is essentially just French manga. Um, but I think it was originally published in Japan. So yeah, I, I'm, I'm expecting a really nice, interesting mix of styles. Uh, I won't show you if any of the artwork in this is... Uh, uh, from from what I've seen flicking through it myself, uh, it is quite explicit, um, but it does have a very kind of photographic kind of style to it, as you can see on the cover here. Um, like, that's what the artwork looked like inside. So, yeah, um, look forward to reading this at some point. Okay, next we have uh, Doing Time, another non-fiction manga by uh, Kazuichi Hanawa. This, was, uh, this is about his time in prison. Um, he went to prison for uh, for owning a firearm, which is um, illegal in Japan, and I think you have you have to go through a lot of loopholes in order to get a license to to have to have a gun. Um, but this guy had a I, I'm not sure if it was like an actual gun or if it was like a gun like a like a prop gun which is modified. Um, either way, the guy had a gun. <laughs> he ended up getting caught and uh, and served time in prison, and this is essentially just about his time uh, in uh, the Japanese prison system. Um, artwork really really nice um, so it's going to be informative um, and pleasant to look at I uh, I assume um, put that down there next uh, another one by Seichi Hayashi this is a uh, breakdown press so Red Red Rock and other stories which is this uh, some of his collected work um, Published between 1967 and 1970. Um, another one by Ryan Holmberg, uh, Breakdown Press. In this one, I'll show you a little bit of his artwork, in fact. Um, I think, oh, did I show you some of his artwork in... No, I did show you some of his artwork in Red Colored Delivery, didn't I? Anyway, there you go. Uh, it's got a very... Um, gives us a lot of negative spacing. But his, his art style reminds me of uh, pop art really pop art sort of style and i think he's directly influenced from pop art because he does use a lot of um kind of like uh disney-esque imagery you know almost like magazine cutting and advertisements and stuff like that you know things that you would commonly associate with like pop art or or dadaism which is kind of like a derivative of pop art um but yeah just a really really odd style uh true true avant-garde um, next, we have a uh, recent purchase of mine, actually, which is uh, Comics Comics Underground Japan, uh, which is similar to Axe in that it's just a, a showcase of some of, you know, the, the, the greatest Gekiga authors um, and, you know, some of their best works. Um, I'll show you some of... Ooh, that's very explicit. Can't show you that. Uh, well, that looks like it's Suahira Maruro. Yeah, it's very similar to his style. Um, yeah, some more artwork there. So yeah, it's, it's just going to be, uh, um, you know, kind of different styles, different artists, different styles showcasing you know, the best of their work. This is actually uh, by uh, Kazuichi Hanawa, who I just showed you for doing time. That's cool. He's in this as well. Um, Next uh, is uh, Last of the Mohicans um, by, uh, what's this guy's name again? Shigeru Sugiyora. Um, this is uh, something I read a little while ago. I didn't enjoy it as much as I thought I would, but maybe then again, I've never read the original uh, novel for um, Last of the Mohicans, so I don't know how faithful this necessarily is to it. Um, but yeah, it's got this kind of like a early 1940s sort of comic, like American comic book style to it as you can see it's a western um and it really reflects that in the type of artwork uh, it's got a really awesome essay at the back that kind of kind of you know kind of gives you an indication as to um you know um the the author's motives um and artistic artistic style uh next another one by Shaichi hayashi this is gold pollen and other stories it's something i read a year oh god years ago uh which is one of my first forays again into uh alternative manga um 
this one's interesting it's got a lot of color pages uh, as you can see again very pop art influenced especially with the um the, the way it's colored as well it looks like it's been uh i don't know what, what do you call this again some kind of printing style um like newspaper print um i can't remember what you call it where you li you literally just lay um you like paint ink onto um ah oh, i can't even describe it but yeah it, as you can see it's got really interesting artistic style uh, the name of the technique used to come uh, to, to do this will will come to me like probably after I filmed the video um, uh, it's as frustrating as, as that is um, there's some more artwork but you kind of get the picture it's different it's odd it's it's artistic it's it artsy fartsy you might think it's a bit pretentious um, which is you know what do you, if you don't understand something or, or, or if it's, you know, really not really in your vein or you think it's just, you know, it's, it's just, or you're just trying to be cool for the sake of being cool. And yeah, I guess you could say it's pretentious, but, um, you know, it just, it, 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 it caters to a niche, I suppose. It's like a niche within a niche. I mean, manga's a niche in and of itself. So Gekiga is, yeah, I suppose you could call it a niche within a niche. Anyway, moving on. So up here... As you can see, it's my uh, uh, collection of Shigeru Mizuki manga uh, onwards towards our noble deaths. I'm not going to get these down just because it's just too much of a pain. Um, an autobiographical piece of uh, Mizuki's time serving in the Japanese Imperial Army uh, stationed in Southeast Asia. Really gritty, um, really disturbing, really, really humbling. Uh, next to that is Nanonba, which is uh, a, a lot more... Um, light-hearted in nature it's 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 um i guess maybe a love letter to uh shigeru mizuki's uh love for 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 yokai um and how he how he got that from his grandma who used the titular nanonba so it's basically just like an, another uh, semi-autobiographical piece about like his childhood like living in the japanese countryside um and interacting with his grandma and his grandma telling him like scary ghost stories it's really cute uh next is his biography of uh Adolf Hitler. Um, that's another one that I'm, that I'm due to read. Uh, as with uh, Tono Monogatari, um, has no relation to the uh, Monogatari, like the modern Monogatari series, you know, the back in Monogatari and all that, isn't it? no relation to that. I think Tono Monogatari is uh, um, an, a really old sort of folk story, I believe. And this is Mizuki's interpretation of that. Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to reading it nonetheless. Next to that is another biography of uh, of the Showa period. So it is his um, four volume, or I believe it's eight volumes in fact, but these are just two in ones. Um, just his his whole sort of, um, it's kind of like a, a graphical essay, I guess you could say, of the of the Showa period, which was a period of in 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 Japan that experienced economic growth. Um, you know, even despite the the world war, so it stretched from nineteen twenty six, as you can see, all the way up to nineteen eighty nine, um, at the uh, just before the the bubble, um, the bubble burst, the the bubble burst, um, economically, um, but yeah, uh, it's something I'm really looking forward to reading. Um, I'm sure it'll be pretty awesome. And uh, here we also have um, his uh, Kataro. Legendary Kitaro series, The Birth of Kitaro, and uh, um, Kitaro meets Nurarion. Um, first of two volumes of curated uh, stories from from the long running Kitaro series. So it's not um, it's not the Kitaro series in its entirety. It's just some of the best soft stories, uh, from what I understand. Um, again, the whole nature of it being curated. Uh, yeah. Now, it's difficult to talk about Gekiga without also talking about the godfather of manga himself, Osama Tezuka. Um, Tezuka didn't work exclusively within Gekiga. Um, obviously, he started, uh, you know, as a, a children's author. Um, but, you know, when Gekiga author started rejecting his his style, you know, that he very much pioneered, um, he, he started creating manga that was a response to that, which is started with swallowing the earth here which was um, Tezuka's first 
uh, adult themed or uh, you know first manga aimed at adults but i guess you could also definitely say that message to adolf uh, ayako uh, mu uh, the book of human insects um among a couple of others uh, can also consider you know be considered gekiga simply for the fact that they were published at the time you know that gekiga was at its uh you know at, at its height or the gekiga movement was at its height um and you know his contemporaries kind of creating uh, stories that were rejecting his style. Um, it was almost like a competition. Even um, we've also got Ota Kirihito, another good example um, of uh, of Gekiga, uh, Gekiga inspired work from Tezuka. Um, but yeah, I just thought it'd be worth mentioning at least Tezuka, as um, you know he did contribute some some titles to uh, to, to the Gekiga movement as well. Uh, I'll also show you um, uh, Lady Snowblood um, by Kazuo Koike and Kazuo Kamimura. Um, and then, you know, the, uh, the the writer of Lone Wolf and Cub, um, not the artist, but still Gekiga nonetheless, and uh, Colour of Rage, again, Kazuo Koike, uh, but artwork done by uh, Seisaku Kano. Both artists have a very similar sort of style to um, Goteki Kojima. Um, more so uh, Seisaku Kano. Uh, also worthwhile noting and mentioning um, uh, Ryochi, Ryochi Ikigami. Um, and again, another another one written by Kazue Koike, Crying Freeman. Um, and also whoa, down here, I was using my <laughs> using my um, my ironing board as a stand. I'm not going to get this out of the way. I'm not going to get it out of the way. Just show you one series, but. Strain, I guess you could consider Gekiga as well, um, by Baronson and um, Ryoichi Ikigami. And finally, um, move that out of the way, just some uh, whatever. Jiro Taniguchi, who, uh, who worked almost exclusively uh, within the uh, uh, Gekiga um, movement, uh, a lot later than, than, than its peak. But we have uh, The Sum of the Gods, uh, Ice Wanderer and other stories. Highly recommend this. Um, Quest for the Missing Girl, again, highly recommend. Uh, Skyhawk, uh, Ferrari, um, The Walking Man, Zoo in Winter, uh, A Journal of My Father, um, A Distant Neighbourhood, and uh, finally, Hotel Harbour View, which is uh, my oldest uh, published manga in terms of this physical volume, like 31 years old. Anyway, um, let's show you a little bit of Taniguchi's artwork. It's from the distant, yeah, let's have a look at Distant Neighbourhood. That's uh, the one I'm, one I most recently read. Uh, and it's got some gorgeous colour pages as well. So yeah, as you can see, Taniguchi opts for that very realistic sort of style. Uh, you know, very kind of anatomically correct humans. But there you go. Um, that has, I believe, and I don't think I've missed anything out this time, uh, be my Gekiga collection, an alternative manga, most of which is, uh, you know, on one shelf. Uh, I'm just panning around to see if I've missed anything. Um, I don't think so. I mean, <laughs> most mon most modern manga, I guess you could. Uh, consider has you know has been influenced by Gekiga to a degree given that you know most if not all more modern manga follow sort of a you know a, a, a cinematic sort of approach to storytelling even if it's aimed at you know a younger demographic uh, you know stories nowadays are just told in a much more cinematic way in terms of that you know you feel like you're watching uh, a film or you're watching a tv series you know they, they, it isn't just literally you, know, you, you can kind of picture yourself in the world almost i'm trying to describe it anyway uh, this video has gone on long enough i really appreciate you sticking around if you've watched all the way to the end um if you've read any of these titles or you have anything to recommend to me then you know please by all means um you know put your thoughts in the comments below uh this is your first time on my channel then you know subscribe um you know, uh, follow me on Twitter. I'll do all that stuff. Uh, but thank you, really. Thank you for sticking around. Um, I didn't intend for this video to be this long. Anyway, see you later.